The eye of the enemy is moving. The end has come. When you're making three films at once, like one day you're shooting something on The Fellowship and then maybe someday you're shooting something on Return of the King, what kind of problems does that present to you guys as, as actors? Well, in a way, I mean, it, it's kind of, it wasn't any different to shooting a normal film in that respect. It's just that the scale of it was much bigger and it, the principal photography obviously took 18 months. But in, in a sense, it always felt like we were just telling one big, big story, you know. So there, was no, there wasn't, it wasn't like, well, this part of the film is, is finished and now, you know, we don't know what's going to happen in the next episode. It's, it's, it had a natural arc and a natural journey and, an, you know, so it was, you, you do that all the time in film. So that, that wasn't too difficult to get, to get a grip on. Do you think there's anything more challenging in this third chapter or more difficult than the first two? I think, yeah, I think the, uh, this is the most emotional movie. So my memory of making these, when we were in the third movie, even though we thought of it as one long movie, you kind of knew what was first, second and third. And this one was exhausting because of how emotional it was. I mean, as well as having like the biggest battle scenes and you know all the huge stuff that we're all looking forward to, I remember it being incredibly emotionally exhausting because everyone's like, up yeah. there, you know, the story's got to end with the things that we have to do, you know, to try and help Frodo in his quest. And so I just remember it being really exhausting. I'll have to ask each of you sort of individually, what, what do you think makes Peter Jackson unique as a director and how did, how did you find working with him throughout the, the process? Oh, that's an amazing question. Um, he's unique because he's got an incredible per persistence of vision. I mean, just phenomenal uh, desire to tell a story truthfully. Um, 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 and basically, I mean, he, he, he puts performances first. He trusts his actors. He's a great collaborator. He instills, uh, you know, total creativity in people and is great at, at you know, he's not a megalomaniac. He's, he's a total human being every single day he's on set. He's just, he's just Pete and, and, you know, he's a family man and, and he's, so he's very inspirational in, in many different ways. Um, and, and, and I think that's, what, that's why these films have, have become what they've become, because there, there is a sense of an extended family which does filter down from him. And, and that's why people are compelled to, to give him their best, you know. Do you have any thoughts on that, Elijah? <laughs> that was brilliantly said. <laughs> I completely agree. Yeah. Come, Master. Come to speak. How would you describe Frodo's relationship with Gollum? What's, what's, what's going on here? They're, they're getting a lot closer. It's the two addicts. <laughs> it's the understanding, you know. Um, Frodo, Frodo sees in Gollum what he could potentially become. And he also sees in Gollum what he's going through, you know. Uh, he sees that, he sees a, 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 an addict that was addicted to the very thing that he's now addicted to. And what it turned him into. And so there's this interesting thing of seeing Gollum in the state that he's in as a result of this ring. And wanting to believe that, that the purity of, of and, and the soul can come back. Uh, because that means that there's hope for himself as well. So it's an interesting relationship. What was it like on the set? Was there a lot of camaraderie? Did you guys get on? What, what nah. <laughs> Have you, I don't think anybody really liked each other. It was a vast pretense. <laughs> <laughs> I quite, I quite liked Liv. Liv was good. She was nice. Yeah. She was. <laughs> there was. I, really there her. was. I think that, that's, part, that's what got us through as well. And, uh, you know, we were all equally passionate about the project and about Peter's vision. And so that certainly gave us enough to get us through the, the difficult times. But it was also the camaraderie and the fact that we all cared about each other and we hung out at, outside of the film and, you know, it was, a, it was a family. We created a family atmosphere and we really have Peter to thank for that. Were there any practical jokers on the set? <laughs> you know, Dom and Vigo. Vigo, I think, yeah. was even more of a practical joke. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Who's usually, who's usually the victim? Who was he picking on? Who was Vigo? <laughs> Normally Dom. And, and Orlando. Oh, Orlando, yeah. Loved, <laughs> loved to pick on Orlando. Yeah. Always getting the elf. <laughs> you know. All you have to decide is what to do with the time that is given to you. Now, you, uh, you got to work with some pretty established uh, veteran actors in this film. What, did you learn anything from Ian McKellen? I mean, I'm a big fan of Shakespeare and uh, been a fan of his for years. What's it like working with him? Oh, man. For me, it was just incredible seeing Gandalf come to life. There were a few times where I'd sit down and we'd go through a scene and, and he'd be, you know, I remember this one particular scene at the, at the table in the kitchen in Bag End 
where he's telling Frodo about the ring and about Sauron and all this. And I remember getting lost in the scene, completely losing it, and just listening to his words. And, I, and for a while, I, I believed it. I was there. I believed him as Gandalf. He used to freak me out like that. He was amazing. Amazing. But also was able to turn it off. I mean, there, I think some people have this idea that, that he's so composed all the time and, and because he comes from Shakespeare and, and the theater, but, you know, he was just a, as, as sort of relaxed and sort of an every, every man as, as anyone was, you know. The board is set. The pieces are moving. He is here. Well, I hear a lot of people talking about the, this one, the people who were in it or who made it say that Return of the King is their favorite of the three. Oh, what God, do you think? yes. Always what been, makes it your favorite? It's always been mine. Um, it's the most dramatic, it's the darkest, it's the most emotional. Um, you know, it's when, it's when each character is finally faced with the end of their task um, and where they have to really deal internally with what they've gone through the entire time. It's also about what is sacrificed for the ultimate good. And I think that's one of the most fascinating elements of the story. We cannot achieve victory through strength of arms. Not for ourselves. But we can give Frodo a chance. 